Aloha and welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part three of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. This is part three, so if you haven't been following along, I would suggest that you pause here and go back and watch the previous versions or previous episodes so that you can catch up with where we're at in the build. If you're just tuning in and you're not familiar with the CBCNC line of Delta printers, I've got links below down in the description so you can check out this bad boy and see what we're putting together today. So at the end of part two, we had mostly assembled the base here. These are just actually sitting here for now, but we built the idler towers, we'd gotten the power supply mounted to the base, and we'd gotten the feed on. Today in part three, we are going to cover steps 10 through 15, where we are going to build the upper motor mounts. So while you guys watch the intro, I'm going to go ahead and gather up the parts for that, and we'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so I've went ahead and gathered up all of the parts that we're going to need for this step and sorted them out by motor mount, as well as setting aside the tools that we're going to need. Uh, besides a soldering iron and solder to solder the end stops together, you're also going to need a number one and a number two Phillips screwdriver and needle nose pliers. And that should be about it for these steps. Let's switch over to the other camera and I'll show you the hardware that we're going to need. So in this step, you're going to need the three of the steppers that were included in the uh, bubble-wrapped package of steppers. You're going to need three sets of the same injection molded parts that were used in step two, the uh, 84407 and 84408, basically the motor mount and the other piece. And then all from the top hardware components bag, you're going to need, uh, for each of these, you're going to need two of the pulleys, the idler pulleys. Um, you're going to need four bolts and T-slot nuts. You're going to need the, um, the switches, the micro switches, the M3 hardware and washers to attach the steppers in a bit, the number two screws, and the number four screws that are used to hold the two halves together. So let's jump in and start putting one of these together. Now, the first thing that we're going to do actually for all of these is on these micro switches, we need to very carefully remove these metal tabs. They are not needed and they will cause them to trigger artificially. So I'm just going to bend that up a little bit gently. You don't want to put too much pressure on it and kind of twist until that comes out. And then you have the switch just like so. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other two. Okay, now before we get started with the rest of it, there is a rendered video in the installation manual that gives you a bird's eye view of how everything's going to go together. So let's switch over and I'll cue that up so you can watch that with me quick. Okay, easy enough, right? So we've actually gotten through steps 10 and 11 in the manual here. So we're going to jump down to step 12. Um, 10 was basically watching that video we just watched and 12 was removing the tabs from these end stop switches. So we're just gonna start with one of these and I'll walk you through the first one. We'll grab the parts that we need. The first thing that we're going to do is install the end stop switches on these and it's best to reference the position in the manual so it looks like this. So it's going to go with the switch part towards the outside here, away from the angle. So it's going to look something like that. Now it comes down to personal preference on this. Some people actually would prefer to solder the wires on this before completing this step. 
Other people like to do this step first uh, so that there's a little bit of mass. So I like to do it as the manual suggests and do this first so that there's a little bit of mass. So I'm going to get that started here. Start it on the other side. A little bit tough to get those in the hole. But once you get it lined up, this should just thread up nice and easy. Okay, based on the length of these screws, they actually come back out the other side just a little bit, which I, I believe is going to be okay. Um, I do want to caution you that after threading those through the plastic like that, they do get warm, so it might startle you a bit when it comes out and you feel hot metal hitting you. Um, also, the switches themselves are fragile, so you don't want to over tighten those screws. Okay, and we're going to set that down and we're going to now uh, put our nylock nuts in there. There's going to be two of them on this piece and they go in from the inside just like on the part that we did last night. And that actually would have been easier to do without that switch in place because it's blocking it. Hmm. Okay, so our lesson learned here There we go, back on track. Okay, so contrary to what the manual tells us, we want to actually put those nuts in before putting the switch on. So I will make a note back to CME CNC to update that section of the manual. There. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is put on our, our two T-slot nuts, like so. Again, you just want to get those started. And then the next thing that should happen here for the drawings is that we would attach the motor. So we're going to take a stepper motor here. Now we're going to have to follow along with the pictures here. Um, bear with me as I'm trying to look at these two to find the best orientation. So with the motor like that, with the wires facing towards you, this is going to go on in this orientation. Each of these is going to use a screw and a washer. Uh, the M3, so we're going to need four of those. Now you want to snug these down so it doesn't fall apart at this point, but we're not going to tighten them up. This should be able to slide a bit freely as that's what's going to allow you to tighten up your belts later. You don't really want those tight, just snugged up and you'll loosen them back up again later. But that gives you a little bit of mass to hold this thing down. Now the manual is actually suggesting next that you attach your two pulleys on here like so. But actually I'm going to recommend that we stop with the assembly on this part here for now. And come back to it in a bit. And the reason is, is because we have to solder these wires to this. And it's going to be much easier to do that without those wheels in the way. So I'm going to set this one aside and then I'm going to assemble the other two motor towers and get them caught up with this, this one. And we'll see you right back after a quick time lapse.
Okay, at this point we have all three of them built where they're ready to solder on the wires for the switches. Just to clear my workspace up a little bit, I'm going to skip ahead and actually prep these back pieces. I'm going to drop the two uh, nylock nuts in and uh, prep the, the T-slot washers on these. That way I can set them aside instead of having all the pieces out here. And then we'll go over here and solder. So let me do that for you quick. Okay, those are out of the way, so we are ready to solder these on. So let's go ahead and pull out our wires and separate them. There should be a total of six of them here. You're going to have a pre-crimped end on one side. You want to be careful that you do not break those off. And you're going to pull them out like so and then separate them into groups of two. Okay, so let's pause here for just a second. It's time to break out your soldering iron, get it heated up, get your tip cleaned, and get ready to go. So let's pause really quick while we do that. Okay, that was long enough for my soldering iron to warm up. Is yours ready or do you wanna, do you wanna pause again and uh, give you a couple more minutes? You ready? Okay, so the way that I want to do this is my soldering iron is ready to go. My tip is cleaned off and what we're going to do is we're going to take and heat this tab just a little bit and we're going to apply a thin little bit of solder to tin that up like so and we're going to be wanting to do the inside and the outside now we can take the wires that go to these and basically Gently put that down like that so that it holds on and let's just let the solder flow back up around the wire and you should be good to go. After it hardens give it a little bit of a tug test to make sure you have continuity and we will rinse and repeat with the outside wire. Great. Okay, that one's done. Make sure you have good solders and give it, again, a little bit of a tug. Then we are going to take these two wires going to feed them down through this hole next to it. And like so, then we're going to make one loop and feed it back through one more time. And this is kind of shown in step 14. This is basically just to create a little bit of wire management there so that it'll help it later. and it'll help act as a bit of a strain relief so that those don't get pulled off. Okay, this one is done. So we're going to set it aside and we are going to repeat the same thing for these other two motors.
Okay, those are done. We can go ahead and turn our soldering iron off. Make sure we clean the tip before we put it away. And go ahead and set that out of the way here. Just to give us a little bit more room. Now that these are done, now we can go attach these bearings, uh, the pulleys and the bearings, and they're just going to snap on like so. I'm going to do two of those on each of these. And then just like we did for the idler mounts, we're going to snap on the smaller piece. Make sure that our gears turn. And then we're going to go ahead on each of these, we're going to drop in two screws and tighten those up. Okay, that one's done. Let's go ahead and finish the other two quickly. Okay, that's it. We now have steps five through 15 complete. We have our upper motor mount assemblies done. So go ahead and pat yourself on the back if you could reach, however you wanna do that. So that concludes part three of the build series. Stay tuned for part four as we keep going through the assembly process and start making this giant thing grow. Special thanks to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max V3.2 for us to build in this build series. And special thanks to the subscribers, Patreons, and everybody that helps the channel to grow. If you're not a subscriber, please feel free to hit subscribe down below and ring that bell if you'd like to get notified of when the next video in the series or other videos we're putting out are available online. If you'd like to help the channel, there are links to both Matter Hackers and Amazon down below that if you don't mind using those affiliate links, they help the channel out and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And with that, we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.